Good Lord, folks. I'm not sure how many of you are here. How many of you will be here? I do not know. I should probably tweet a link. This show is not going to happen until about um, legitimately seven minutes ago, eight minutes ago. Very tired. You know, I thought it was a great show, but I know Shoot said he wasn't going to be available tonight. So I was like, well, you know, we won't do a post-show. We... And that main event, let me tell you something, folks. I am um, very consistent in my take on triple threat tags. That has got to be one of the most superbly put together and conceived uh, professional wrestling multi-man matches that I have ever seen. Tell me if I'm going too far. Push back and going too far, but it was 2.55 a.m. and I was on my feet. I was rocking. It was outrageous, man. Absolutely in awe of what we just watched. Um, there was something strangely, and I say strangely not as a, as a slight, I say it lovingly. There was something moving and gratifying about that moment that I'll be completely honest with you guys, I do not really understand. Um, this is a team that's been around now for a couple months. They shot a couple of angles that suggested they were not going to be around as a team for much longer. Um, and, yeah, there was something rewarding to that result. There was something gratifying and fulfilling to that moment that I can't quite put into words as of yet. I really hope I'm not alone and you guys feel it. Looking at the chat right now, I think you're uh, you're on board with what I'm getting at. Um, it was striking. It was really special. There was an excitement to that, and I'm going to get into it more in a second. More days. Let me tweet this link, guys. I apologize. You have to bear with me, all right, because I genuinely <laughs> was preparing myself to go get some sleep. But we're going to do this here. Um, it may mean there is no Burt tomorrow. I do not know. But <clears throat> I feel like these times, you know, is when I, I feel like if I didn't do a show, I would just be, um, you know, I would just be like on Twitter, like tweeting about it. So let's just fucking do a show and have some fun and hang out, right? All right. Let me tweet some links. and We'll get to business here. Um, I want to say I saw someone said, Paul said, um, Young Bucks are unmatched. Bro. You couldn't put, I mean, the the degree of, like, prolific, you know? In a generation where there are a lot of great wrestlers and great wrestling acts, it is fucking ridiculous how prolific that team is. They just don't have bad matches. I'm honestly convinced at this point they could be in the triple threat tag with myself and Bobby shooting Oracle. <laughs> and we'll probably go three and a half, you know? Right, let me tweet this here. Talking Dynamite, that's what we're doing, right? Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Um, just remarkable. And, and the, you know the best thing about what they did tonight? I'm going to be scatterbrained, folks. Bear with me. What was so brilliant about tonight, and this is where the Bucks are just wizards. Sorry, Chris Jericho. <clears throat> but they gave them that false finish. You know the one I'm talking about, because if you just watched that and you popped as much as I did, you know exactly the false finish I'm, I'm referencing. <clears throat> I'm referencing the one where Swerve in our glory <laughs> hit their tag finish. And let me tell you, bite on it, don't even do justice to what I did. I fucking stood up with my, my arms in the air like I was, like I was at you know, a football stadium or something. It was, I mean, I was convinced that was it. It had to be it. Um, so it was like that part of it made the eventual finish all the more um, spectacular because what happened was in, in, a, in a strange way, and this is where the Bucks understand like crowd psychology. Everyone says to use the word psychology, right? What does that fucking mean? But this is where the Bucks are genius because they know how wrestling fans think. And so that means that when you put that false finish there, Anyone watching that match would have come out of that false finish being like, well, if Keith and Swerve were going to win, it would have happened right there, you know? And that is the brilliance of the current wrestling mind and how you can actually reinvent ideas and look at things differently. 
you almost play with what people expect, right? God forbid I use the phrase subvert expectations, but you do, you play with that. And that felt like where they would win the match. So therefore, when they actually fucking win it, it's like this unbelievable triumph. Um, this was really, that word, I want to stick with that word for a second, triumphant is the is the one. I, Dynamite has now been a show for nearly three years. And I think, you know, I've used, I use the word prolific about the buck, but I think it's, it's fitting for that show too. You know, Dynamite is consistently, there's something worth your time. You know, whatever you think of the storytelling, whatever, like there's always good wrestling on that show. Um, apparently we're going to have a session banks update while we're on the air. I don't think it'll be a particularly big story, but we'll see. Um, obviously I won't like give it away if it is. Um, but uh, what do you mean call it? What was it? Oh yeah, Dynamite. There's a lot of quality on Dynamite, right? So, it's maybe prisoner in a moment. I don't know. You tell me. If, tell me if I'm going too far, guys. To me, that was like one of the most memorable moments in the history of the show. Like immediately, that felt like unique. And I ain't here to put us over because we say a lot of shit that's proven wrong. But one thing I will say: some of you guys that watch the Grim will know this. We've been consistent about like some stuff. People have trained themselves that's good and bad, right and wrong. Um, and actually it's all about how you do it and when you do it. There's this weird wrestling playbook that the right way to do wrestling is everyone has long title reigns and that's how the belt matters. And it's like, no, you can do these things, these moments in time where you do something for that night. You make a moment for that night. You do the title change. No one expects you do something crazy. And it is not conventional thinking, but it can be powerful pro wrestling. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tonight felt like maybe AEW's first truly shocking title change in terms of how it happened. Again, folks, tell me if I'm wrong because that was that was not on the cards. I'll be honest with you guys. I um I genuinely thought that if if and if you'd asked me for prediction, I'd have said 90%, um, you know, young bucks to win. And I'd have said 8%, you know, uh, Team Taz. And I'll, I'll give that last two to swear. I just didn't really have a shot. This is a good call. Put it in the chat saying it. This is a good call. Um, Brody and Cody is a good call, yeah. More people brought that up. Um, yeah, and that was – the reason that was shocking too was like the way they did it, right? Like that was very striking. That was another one where they went against convention. I thought it was very, very powerful. Um, but this was – like, it felt like such a lock, the result. Like, I like this take from Bill. You more expected the turn instead of the win. God, that's why fucking rules. And here's the thing, and I'm not trying to poison the wheel here or, you know, change the conversation. I want to about it tonight. But, like, if these belts just go back and they do that angle, I don't think that's a problem because we have this. This is part of what wrestling TV is, you know. Like, this is part of the idea of it. Like, it should be unpredictable. There should be this vibe of, if I miss tonight, I might see something special. I think if you miss tonight, you miss something special. I really do. I, I think I think that was powerful no matter what you do next. Because I don't know if Swerve and Agora are going to be champs for six months. I don't really care, to be honest with you. Um, it was fabulous. What an absolutely remarkable television main event. Main event in any case, but television is the is the, for, for the phrase I'm going to choose to use here. Um, we have some follows. Junk faced, uh, Escaloya cheered 100 bits. Thank you, brother. Guy man, dude followed also. We appreciate you guys very very much. Um, we I do not know how long I'll be around, but I am here to uh, to pop with you guys and spend the next hour maybe or so. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. I might be here less. I might be here more. I do not know right now. It'll probably be me the whole time. So. Do not expect our, uh, uh, you know, a great collection of guests. Many people are out of the ball game tonight for a range of reasons. Bobby's obviously, of course, being a, a celebrity out there doing media for the 31. So uh, if you want to hang with me for a bit, that's what I'm probably going to be doing. Yeah, and this is it. Like, this is exactly it. And if they don't, and again, this is if, and again, we'll talk about the what happened itself rather than speculating, but let's just say they don't have the belts for long. It's like, but we got this, you know. Like, not everything has to be done in this way of, like, what happens in three months? It's like, this is the shit that makes a TV show truly, um, 
truly resonate with people, you know, because we have these memories. And this happened 20 minutes ago, but I'm telling you guys with confidence, I don't think many of us are going to forget this. This was fucking special, man. And I haven't talked about, um, I haven't talked about a certain piece of this match, and I would like to now, Team Taz, who I love both guys. They're two of my favorite singles wrestlers in the whole promotion. I just think they're fucking awesome. This is clearly the best of ever wrestlers team. Tonight, they were like on another level. They had some cool tandem offense in there. What about the big car off the top? Um, they were, yeah, they were absolutely, absolutely tremendous tonight. Hobbs specifically, not that Ricky wasn't great, but I'm more, frankly, I'm more used to Ricky being great in this whole match. At double or nothing, I thought Hobbs, um, as much as I love him, I thought he slightly struggled to adjust to that type of match and that kind of spot fest. Well, let me tell you something. That was not the case tonight. The Reese brings it up. The frog splash, which I'm sorry, I don't care what anyone says now. And I'm and blessed Taz. He was confident enough to so say he can make it. But I was looking at where, where fucking Keith was in that ring. And I said, listen, he's an incredible athlete. But that's a long, long way. <laughs> and he made it, man. He did it. Maybe the best part of the whole match beyond the finish, honestly, was the, the spine buster salvo. Um which at the end of it, like Hobbs just like, <laughs> like looked at the crowd like, yeah, I'm that fucking guy. Yeah, I am. And he popped, the place popped. Um, he's special. He really is. I, I understand that there are a lot of guys on the roster who can have really good matches and he's not as, you know, um, I guess the word would be he's not as reliable yet. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm a big fan, but I'm just trying to like kind of see it from the other side. Play devil's advocate, so to speak, to myself. But I think there's like a raw intensity and physicality to Hobbs that's like really unique and special. Um, there's something there, there's something magnetic to that dude. And I think what really intrigues me about him is him and Ricky, honestly, I think there's big time babyface runs ahead of both of them, you know? Um, yeah. I, I just, I think the world of all the guys in that match, I honestly, um, I tweeted this at the start of the match. Like one of the things that was really cool about this match and it's saying I completely, and this is just being transparent, I completely missed the boat on um, in terms of when they announced it. Because my my reaction when they announced it was, oh, my fucking God, another triple threat tag, which, you know, you guys know where I'm at, and that is what it is. Um, but the one thing I kind of slept on was, like, the Young Bucks haven't interacted with these four guys at all. So while those four dudes have been fighting, you know, left, right, and centre, um, they haven't interacted with the Bucks whatsoever. And those four guys are, to me anyway, you know, four of the absolute premium talents in, in the world of wrestling right now. Like if you, I don't, you know, I'm not saying this is something I've, I've done, although I might as a, as a show coming up soon. But um, if we fucking put together like a, a big board, these four guys are very up high on, on mine in the whole wrestling kind of scene right now. Like, and they're all in their own way, you know? So having them in there with the genius of the Young Bucks, who are like this unparalleled force of nature when it comes to, to putting together matches and like understanding how the audience reacts to things and knowing this audience, the modern audience, better than any other wrestlers in the world. It was always an ingredient, you know, a, a um, what do you call it? a mix, all the ingredients were there to, to make it perfect, you know? So even still, I think it was better than anyone could have reasonably expected. Like, I'm sure a lot of you guys thought the match would be great. I was sure it'd be very good. I did not expect it to be like a top five dynamite match ever for me. <laughs> like it was wild, man. I know I'm scared, right? I know I'm talking in circles, but like, why was that recipe? Thank you, Toby. So Cedar. it's 4am. I apologize. Um, why was that? So like weirdly touching and emotional. You, am I guys? Tell me if I'm fucking out of my mind here. There was something truly momentous to that, you know. The reason you someone said in the chat earlier, you build convention, this is why you do it, so you can then move away from it, and it could be effective. Um with that in mind, this is also why you establish belts and make the title changes better, because when you do one like this, it feels like it has some real some real meat to it, you know, some real excitement to it. If the bells don't mean anything, it isn't quite a striking moment. What an incredible, incredible piece of business. Um, I'm going to talk about other stuff on the show. 
I'm sure. And like, look, I, this is the truth, right? It's a baby face team. With this is it's the way it's meant to be. I was just about to say the exact phrase. Uh, you're right. But man, it was something. I think it's just. And like, this is probably more a commentary on me. So I don't know. But like, we do so much like previewing and predictions and foreshadowing. It's honestly something that increasingly I want to move away from. You guys probably realize watching the content. Um, I'm more looking at where it was rather than where it could be. Or, you know, I think that's a healthy way to consume wrestling. But even still, like you didn't have to fucking sit down and think about this one very much to not like to be very, very sure of the result to me. Like it felt like a lock. So that made it, you know, pack an extra punch. I also think there's like ingredients here and elements here that are just special in the sense that it's two guys who, and this is where I think the WWE thing is such a miss, like just people misreading the way wrestling fans watch now. Like WWE talk is always like, well, they've got so many ex WWE guys. It's like those guys carry stories, man. You know, if you're a fan of Keith Lee tonight was like a genuinely rewarding, gratifying moment after like a really weird couple years for Keith. Two years ago, just shy of two years, in fact, which is even wilder thinking that, he beat Randy Orton in about five minutes. And it sure felt like someone intended to feature him in a major way, right? He won the NXT belt and dropped it immediately so he could go up. And he went through an awful lot. Um, honestly, much more than just bad booking, which he certainly had you know, experience too, but much, much more than that. And thank goodness he's good and he's, he's around and having fun out there and killing it. He's doing so good. But... Um, that's part of this, man. Like, you, they, ain't, they ain't lost on me. I mean, um, you guys will know I wasn't, like, fired up about, about Keith coming in this series. I've absolutely loved him in the promotion. I was completely wrong. But, yeah, I think that stuff matters. I mean, you know, look at Swerve. I mean, people were way into the Hit Row stuff. They were gone in, like, a month, you know? It's – um. That, I think wrestling fans are aware of those, those, those factors. I really do. I believe that. Nonetheless – it's probably best that we we look at other things on the show here. If we're going to do this, and we're going to just do like a sort of post show of sorts. Um, I will, you know, if I see something in the chat, it's a question I will answer it. Obviously, so I won't talk kind of formally, but I'll stick to a format. But I don't know if you guys know, but also on this show there was a John Moxley um, Takeshita match uh, that was a legitimate like plus four star deal. Um, <laughs> Takeshita. <laughs> was busted open and this crowd who seemingly had no interest in cheering him by the end of the match was like popping huge because Moxley like almost forced their hand and made them actively uncomfortable in the ad break. It fucking ruled. He's basically challenging them to get behind Takeshita. He did such a good job of it and Takeshita is so awesome in response. They actually worked. It was powerful. Takeshita is um like honestly kind of um surreal in the sense that like i keep waiting for for like there to be a hitch you know because like again this is all on me by the way guys isn't it? but i haven't seen enough to catch before AEW, right it's so, like coming into this match i was kind of thinking like, money takes me like what do you think this you know how good do you think this is gonna be i was like i'm sure it'll be good you know but i, I don't know if it'll be like mind-blowing you know i was just i was temporary my own expectations for it like they start the match and it's like it's so intense and the work is so good i immediately was like, oh no i'm way off this is gonna be fucking like incredible like this is gonna be better than just very good this is gonna be like a very memorable match which is hilarious because you know two hours later it was <laughs> kind of surpassed in its own way that ain't a, a fault of the match it's just how good the, the show was tonight um Takeshita is like such a unique mix of wrestling excellence that I genuinely don't have a comparison. Like I like this Steamboat one in his ba in kind of his baby face nature and the way he can fire up, but like his offense is so dynamic. You know, I have no good comparison for him. Genuinely, he's he's actually someone you could act like legitimately describe as generation. I'd be like, yeah, works for me. Um, and this is the truth, like, and this is where, you know, folks like myself, I'm simply uneducated on, on the gentleman's career, so please excuse my kind of inexperience of him, but I just, 
I'm in awe of it, man. Every week, I he, like I'm kind of waiting to see him struggle go over with a crowd or do something that's, and he just gets better. Like this match tonight, I thought this match tonight was was con- like considerably better than the Eddie match, like genuinely. Speaking of such, and I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't know where you guys stand on this. I think it's pretty clear, John Moxley. I know this isn't a hot take to be clear, but I think it's pretty clear he's the rest of the year. Right? I think we all agree. Um, you know, he's. He's he's that guy right now. We're in July, obviously, so things can change. But if he stays in the ball game, he's going to win the rest of the year. He's been fucking unbelievable this year. Uh, he's clearly in the form of his life. He's feeling it. He's remarkable. But I genuinely think tonight is like as good as I've ever seen him wrestle. Because tonight he was like multiple things. Like not only was he John Moxley who causes people to bleed. And very violent, aggressive, but like there was a real poise to him tonight as the veteran, you know. He really took them on a ride. I mean, he made a very bold choice stylistically in what he did here because they could have just done, you know, could have just traded bombs and people would have loved it, it'd have been great. But he made a clear choice of like, no, this is going to be about Takeshita. And that's why Takeshita came up with the blood, and that's why Moxley was was kind of in some ways, the de facto heel. He wasn't the heel. What I mean is he he took the match in a way that challenged the audience and said, listen, I might be the top guy here, but this, you know, this, this is his night to get cheered. And it took some doing because that wasn't a natural crowd <laughs> for this kind of match. Um, but, man, they got him. It was absolutely unbelievable. Um, some of the false finishes were like, like they never convinced. Like there was a lot of discourse about who should win, and I never really bought. Um, thank you, Jay. I appreciate Jay. I'm, I'm going to read that in a second. I really appreciate. I apologise for being bad at getting to those. Um, I uh, what do you call it? I don't know. I was talking about John Moxley. Uh, oh yeah, this is it. I'm sorry. Three thirty a.m. So I never really bought that Takeshita was going to win because, like, I don't think that's how they book. And like, honestly. I don't think that's how they should book. I actually am a big fan of hierarchy in wrestling, and I think Moxley's one of the only guys who really has it. I hope you just beat him because. That's just my take. You might disagree. I don't know. A lot of people I very much respect did, so whatever. Um, but this was good enough that by the end, it was like, oh, my God, they might beat him. <laughs> you know? like There was that one where Mox like slid out of the pin at 2.9, and the crowd kind of booed because it was so close. It was, bro crazy match man like the idea of doing that shit on tv and it not being like your tv match of the year is fucking insane this is the thing and this is very important like Shu and i actually been talking about this a lot recently Shu was watching um strong last night and he was like i'm gonna watch this because they announced for strong upcoming rocky romero versus dax harwood and we were talking about it. i was like bro look at wrestling man you know like, I'm not saying it's perfect. I know we all get frustrated at different times. Like, it is what it is. But, like, there's so much just, like, shit worth your time in wrestling. Like, guys busting your ass and having good matches. So, like, it doesn't surprise me. But at the same time, this kind of match where your top guy takes one of the most unique, spectacular talents in all of wrestling and they have a 15-minute fucking banger where guys bleed and there's, like, all these epic false finishes. The yeah. idea that that isn't a match that's, like, remembered... Um, you know, at the end of the year, and actually, in fact, is the second topic on the end of the night. Listen, let's not take these moments for granted. That's very, very special. You know, these these um these shows are jam packed with wrestling that's like of a very high level. There's other stuff on this show, by the way, that was really good that would be the highlight of a TV show. You know, years ago, and I'm not trying to do, you know, wrestling everybody with like a heart emoji. I, you know, it's what it's like what you like, but I will say I think it's striking how much you know good professional wrestling is is out there right now and dynamite is kind of so much so that dynamite is like it's honestly broke it's the scale like it has its own system now you know like dynamite is so ridiculous in terms of how much they put on the show that it's kind of they get great on their own on their own scale completely and I, I think that's honestly just the natural result of it. i'm not even saying that to be you know, to be a commentary. Like I do it. I think everyone does it. And you watch a show like this and you go, oh my God, this is a TV show, you know? That phrase shoot used before of weekly events is absolutely spot on. That really is. That's the, the, the perfect way to explain it. 
Um, all right, we have a super grid. I want to read this because I'm terrible at these. Very, very bad. So I, I appreciate it so much. Um, our pal Jake says, uh, from Spooky Perverts, the post-riff bump finish that show, we have won all how. Yeah, this, that was interesting, right? Spooky Perverts was like a combination of late night grin bits. Silver would be good on the grin, I must say. Thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate the super grin. If you would ever like to send one of those, you can do so at streamlabs.com slash late night grin. If you just have a question, I will try my best to read it regardless because, you know, I'm not fucking sitting and trying to do a grift. It was a wrestling show. Um, so, anyway. Is Takeshi the most prolific wrestler since Okada showed back up in New Japan? Um, well, I have to say, I think the guy he shared the ring with tonight as a as an argument in that conversation right now, don't you? I mean, I, I like the com I like the talking point, but Jesus, where Moxley is like, he's he's in a different level right now. He's a form. He's unbelievable. He's I mean, I love John Moxley, but he amazes me. I, I sometimes watch him, and he's he's just way better than I think he is. And I think he's fucking great, you know? Like, I I actually think he really... Because there's a difference, right? Like, the rest of the year is different to the best wrestler in the world, right? Like, there's a lot of circumstances going to wrestler of the year. And certainly, Moxley gets a lot of opportunities to have good matches and has a high output. But even still, there's been a couple of times I've watched him recently. Going, oh, he might actually be the best wrestler in the world. And he ain't a conventional pick. I know that. He ain't, you know, like the classical world title work of it. He's a lot more of that than people realize or give him credit for. He was very Terry Funk tonight, I thought. And um, I know that's a cliche comparison because everyone's always, but I actually have not seen that comparison be fitting so much as I did tonight. Like, I think, you know, sometimes it's just like, oh, he does hardcore stuff, Terry Funk. I'm talking about a different Terry Funk tonight. And I was like 1989 Terry Funk working fucking Saturday night. It was... That was what I, what I saw tonight, and that's a very high compliment, let me tell you, from, from me. So he amazes me, honestly. Um, my mind's blown by how, how good he is at this point. Um, I love this. Traveling champions are back. Elevating younger talent on the way. Professional wrestling is back. It's fun, man. It's very fun to have a major national promotion um, that allows talent to kind of, you know, expand beyond the net. Um, because you get these like really weird deals, like in, literally in fucking like, ten days from now, I'm gonna go see, um, I'm gonna go see Swell with my dad, right? And it's like that's fun, man. Like you know, it's one of the coolest things in restaurant. I've seen these big TV stars go elsewhere and 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 you know, um, be stars, man. Like as you said, that's the thing you, that was very commonplace yesteryear, and it was gone for like twenty years. So it's great to have it back and. Um, yeah, that's one of the best things in wrestling right now, to be honest with you. Like, is it, I, I really enjoy seeing these guys do other stuff. Moxley is the king of it. I mean, that dude shows up every weekend with a fucking four-star match. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I like this too. I like how they featured Rosa and Pax matches. Yeah, I, I thought that was that was nice. I um, I saw Rosa's promo was as divisive as ever. I, I understand that she was like, well, it was a banger. But honestly, that feels like it's kind of in character for Thunder Rosa. She got pinned clean with a roll-up. So... I do buy that her response there just be like, yeah, match fucking ruled. I'll beat you on the next one, you know? She wasn't robbed or anything. She would just pop for the, for the physicality. I didn't even know it was a problem. Um, yeah, I don't know. The Jericho um, the Jericho promo tonight is something else that was like a clearly intended. To, I don't know how effective it really was. It was a good promo. I didn't think it was like great. It was definitely intended to be like a home run segment. Um, so... That also speaks to kind of just how much is going on right now. It was good, don't be wrong. I just, I don't think quite the punch he maybe expected it to. Uh, the, the moment when he said pain maker was fucking hilarious. He said that shit like he was saying that, like, you know, um, I'm trying to have a good comp, like Cactus Jack. That's how he presented the pain maker. That may be very nuanced performance art. I genuinely don't know, but it popped me tremendously. Um, so anyway, what else? Oh, the sales I want to talk about. Well, let me open this Pepsi Max thing, folks, because I'm gonna, you know, again, I wasn't prepared for this. Now, let me let me do this here. So, oh my God, right. We need to have a conversation, okay? Now, bear with me. We need to have a conversation as adults, as friends. 
as a family, when you have a conversation about a certain man who fights in Bellator, a gentleman who Jim Ross is always very excited to see, we need to talk about Jake Hager. As adults, right? As friends, as family. Because I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's 3.37am. I ain't got nothing to hide. I'm going to read you some text messages. This is what I sent to young MC Shoot. Um, I sent this to him. This was two hours ago. An hour and a half ago. It read as followed. Hey man, can I be honest with you? You know Jake Hager? I kind of think he fucking rules. In fact, I think he should be a top guy in all Japan pro wrestling. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't really know what that last part meant. Um, I don't watch all Japan pro wrestling anymore. Um, I'm almost certain that he would rather not work all Japan pro wrestling. But I just wanted everyone to know that at this some point tonight, in the midst of his match with Claudio Castanoli, I just stopped pretending that I didn't like Jake Hager. I decided to actually rules. Um, I don't know how we feel about this, guys. If you would like me to, I can quickly retire this and you know we'll move away from it as a bit. But I would like you to all know that at some point tonight, I just decided I think he's great. Um, I unironically think that if he's like... Like if he's... This is not even me doing a bit anymore, seriously. When he switched on, I think he is a legitimately good pro wrestler. Like, I don't even think that's debatable, to be honest. Um, he is, like, not a complex wrestler. But between you and I, as friends, I kind of think, like, that's why he rules. Legitimately. Like, seriously. Like, part of why I think Jake Hager is fun is because he is, like, one dimensional and he has his style and he's just like a big athlete who just kind of fucking throws people around and it's like let me tell you something man there's something to be said for that you know everyone does so much stuff now and everyone has so many different styles and i'm watching jake hoger out there as he just like fucking just picks claudia up and throws him down and i'm like well there's something to be said for this you know I'm just saying that his last two singles matches in AEW, you're looking at three and three quarters. You know what I'm saying? It's very, very, very exciting. He's fun, genuinely. Um, obviously, I'm being silly and, like, you know, popping myself. I, he's not, like, a top 50 guy in AEW. I'm aware. I'm just being silly. But I do genuinely enjoy watching him wrestle when he's motivated against a good guy. Like, I think he's actually a kind of fun, um, you know, a kind of fun outlier on a roster where everyone does so much stuff. He's just like a guy who just fucking like throws people. He can do suplexes, really. He just like picks them up and puts them down, pops me. Claudio Castagnoli. Never forget, folks. And, I, and this is one of the few things that I was always right about. Very few. Very, very few. But when Claudio left the WWF, there was this puzzling, bizarre, Will they, won't they, should they, shouldn't they? It's fucking Claudio, man. I don't give a shit how many matches he lost on Fed TV. I don't care what he did on SmackDown. If you can sign Claudio, you sign Claudio. This fucking freak was out there. He powerbombed Jake and he picked him up with ease. He fucking swung him. He European up with him out of the air on a pop-up. Oh, what a man, you know? Just too much. It's honestly unfair. If I was wrestling AEW and Claudio came, I'd be like, oh, shit. You know? What are we going to do now? I mean, this piece of shit, he's so good at everything. It's honestly, like, ridiculous how gifted that guy is. I hope everyone here realizes, because I think we kind of make this point enough, so we probably bore you, so you're probably rolling around now, but in all seriousness, there will be a day... And it already really happens, but when trust me, when history, you know, does its does its its writing. Once Claudio's peers are the guys giving the opinions consistently, the wrestling nerd of tw in twenty years will be wearing a Claudio Castagnoli T-shirt. You know, the same way that like I pop for like Arn Anderson, or whoever else. 
the nerd in 20 years is going to be like, Claudio is actually the best wrestler of his generation because every fucking dude in the industry thinks he is that dude. He's that guy. He's the best. And he's just an absolute king. Everyone loves him. And um, when history removes itself from how frustrating his booking has been, on the other side, you know, I think in AEW is going to be a lot more at home. Um, you know, I think people will really be able to appreciate how brilliant he has been. The amount of TV matches that dude churned out without any creative force behind him is honestly ungodly. He's one of the great professional wrestlers ever. He's remarkable. So anyway, Claudio, what a guy. Uh, he always goes hard, bro. Seriously, like, it, honestly, he had no right to work as hard as he did in WWE, but he always did. He's just great. I mean, even those matches with Volta on the house shows were, like, getting good reviews, you know? And those on house shows. <laughs> He's so special. And I think you're you're seeing like this um this increasing, you know, uh, like this this increasing kind of trend where uh and it pops me honestly, pops me very much. It feels like AEW is more and more getting its like like its house style is the wrong phrase for it. Like what it is, its identity. Um because to me, the weekly event system now feels like something that's really locked in, where it's like there are some big events, there are some smaller events, but it happens every Wednesday. That's basically the idea. Rampage is more conventional TV, I think, in some ways, the way it's paced. Dynamite, you look at the lineup, you know what you're going to get, right? Obviously, the results, as tonight proved, kind of um, you don't know, but you get it's not like you're going to do stuff segment-wise that you would not expect generally. And I think it's a big part of it, as Brucey Beats mentions. He is building the roster of guys he likes and watched rather than the roster of guys who are available in a world in which WWE has signed everyone for Pulse. Um, the original roster had a lot of talent. I'm not knocking them. I think it's very clear, though, that Tony is getting more and more guys that he has a personal attachment to. Um, so, you know, that, that I think, is, is important. Um, and what you're seeing with that is there are certain guys who fit better on uh, AEW. And honestly, there will be certain guys who go the other way and we'll actually say they might fit better doing weekly promos and being a weekly personality than they did in the kind of um, matchmaking system of of Tony Khan. And I agree with this. It's a good point. Five match card, I think, is probably the right way. There was good time promos. But I, does that make sense to you? Why? I think there are certain guys who benefit from doing skit-heavy, promo-heavy TV then guys, where AEW ultimately is about the match you eventually book. It's about that match graphic that eventually is going to come out of all of this, you know? That's where ultimately is. Like, that's why I thought tonight was a big night for Wardlow. I saw the match was slight device. I had a good time with it. But it was a big night for Wardlow because it's like, in AEW, he ain't just going to squash everyone. Like, it's part of what, this, it's part of the progress, he, the, you know, the progression he has to make is he has to just have real matches because that's what AEW is about, man. And he was like, I think he's capable of it, clearly, you know? Um, I think it's interesting. I think more and more you're seeing AEW kind of find who they are as a promotion. Not that they had an identity crisis before, but I don't know. It feels like the system is more and more to what Tony Khan actually wants um, rather than what fits the crew that he's got at the, at the moment, you know? So it's an all-star roster and he basically just just match makes accordingly. And then you get some kind of like, you know, Hager and Claude is a perfect example. Like you get like a, cool little stop along the way. Like, obviously, that's not a huge match for Claudio, but they clearly were confident it would be good. It was. And that's, like, a, a neat example of it. Orange and Wardlow was really interesting to me going in. I didn't really know what it would look like. Um, I was intrigued as to how the audience would react to it um, in terms of, like, if they would pick a side or they would feel a type of way if Wardlow was getting a lot of heat. Um, you know, like, control segment where he was just kicking the shit out of uh, of Orange. I actually thought they found a way to do it that completely fit both guys. And, like, you know, it didn't hurt anyone. It actually was just good TV, and it, it made sense for both guys. Like, Wardlow, to me, Wardlow is way better as a top guy, potential top guy, top guy, whatever. 
like he's he's mold for me if i'm looking at him he's like cool guy ward like you know like i'm all for intense but when he's cool he's like there's something there like i always remember when he cost mjf i think it might have been the sean ding deal and he cost mjf and he was he was uh he was getting dragged out and he was like smiling at him like got you again you piece of shit and he he looks so fucking cool and to me that's what makes him like actually awesome because there's a lot of big guys that can like growl and you know froth at the mouth and shit and do mean faces and flex but with wardlow is like actually cool there's actually like a a genuine charisma there um I thought like that was present for most of tonight's match. Like the way he was reacting to Orange and the way he acted after, I thought he came across awesome tonight. Um, it's very challenging to put that match together. I'm kind of stunned they did it without having to, having to do it and just did it because I'm sure someone had the specific idea of what it would look like. But, um, but yeah, I, I thought it worked perfectly. I mean, Orange, I understand there's always pushback of Orange. I, I do get it. I just think he's, you know, genuinely, I just think he's, quite brilliant i i think he's um so smart man i think that dude's wrestling brand we talked about the bucks earlier right and like look he ain't you know matt and nick jackson i'm aware of that but i think he has a really unique understanding of character and what makes it him so special is he has this character such a defined character and he wrestles this in this particular mold each time but when does he leave you wanting more in terms of overall match quality? You know, like in a big match, he just really doesn't. I mean, him and Osprey stole the show at Forbidden Door. That show was fucking incredible. Every match was four stars in that show. And I thought we had the best match in the whole show. Um, he's just brilliant, you know, and this is a big part of it. And this is one of the few things that I'm lucky enough to uh, I'm not completely ignorant to because I saw a lot, enough of it. Um, I'd like to see more, but I saw enough of it. Like there is a lot to be learned from watching Orange pre- orange you know um he's just a great wrestler who has learned how to to truly play this character uh, to be this personality to be this persona whatever you want to say and that's much different to a guy who has found a character that works and he's making up the difference elsewhere you know like very very different what you have here is a guy who's a great wrestler who's found a character that works and he can now pair the both things together and i think you see that in matches like this um Six matches with Luchasaurus squash. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that wasn't, um, I don't think that was Christian's finest work. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I, I didn't pay that much attention, but I didn't think it was his, his strongest effort. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, what was the other thing on this that I wanted to talk about? I've forgotten now. I had something else I wanted to. There's many things on this show. So I remind me of other stuff. The only thing on this show that I would say was um, unfortunate was the sandbag bit. Um, I would have probably not done that. But I am simply built different, you know. You get what you get, I suppose. Um, I did not... This seems to have been the consensus goalie, so all how. I didn't think that was... Uh, Anna Jay's finest hour, to be totally honest. Um, but I thought it was really cool that the crowd got into it, you know? Like, I was really cool that the people actually genuinely got into it. In the ad break, I could feel it happening. They really got behind Anna. And, you know, I don't understand hometown, but, like, still, it was kind of just thrown on TV. Um, so, I oh, was pretty neat. Um, um, the match, I think they could do it, have a much better match. I just think there was a couple moments tonight where you could see they were kind of struggling for chemistry a little bit um i see there's as many pots the sandbags i'm sorry I, I have my limits so i'm very glad you guys enjoyed it i just you know you get what you get the tire j segment was unbelievable that was like one of those wbf um backstage exclusive they posted twitter you know exclusive after losing on raw and they put they show on raw talk there's some issues there let me tell you the history of tire j what do you think um charlie caruso or whatever the hell you know um, I do think they're going to do an Anna J heel turn. You know, I think the uh, the closing piece of it where she was like, you need to, you know, you need to consider your career moves, I think will be important and, and pivotal for her. I've been saying it for a while. I think Anna J needs to be a heel. Um, I'm sure she's a wonderful person. She certainly seems to be. But her personality certainly is unlocked more as a heel than as a babyface which is fine. Nothing wrong with that, right? Most wrestlers, especially young wrestlers, 
as a baby face, she seems as endearing as it is that she seems slightly shy on TV. It's a little bit limiting from a wrestling perspective, you know. So I think as a heel, she maybe can embrace a character and get comfortable out there. Um, you know, maybe she could be real mean. I don't, I don't know. I've not seen enough Anna J Hill promos. I know she was in Dark Order, but I don't remember many promos. But sometimes it unlocks people's personality, you know. Have been able to be a character rather than just being like I'm me out there on TV. Um, Anna as Jericho's dark magician would <laughs> dark magician. Good lord, man! That actually generally popped me. I think the Jericho appreciation site. Oh, bro, this talk. Daniel Garcia is that dude. We need to have a conversation. Last like six months, I've really felt I felt myself going from this guy's a good professional wrestler to like this guy's this there's something here, there's an X factor here. And then the Jericho appreciation like stuff has really accelerated that. I thought his promo tonight was fucking quality. Absolutely excellent. Wasn't it? Wasn't it just I thought it was a great pro wrestling promo. It actually to be totally honest, it was the kind of promo that I think should be on the show more, where it really felt like an old school promo. You know, he looked down the camera and he said, "Here's what I'm, you know, here's where I'm at. I'm going to kick the shit out of you." He's summing. I'm. You can see him getting better, right? You can see it. But even beyond the skill progression, you just get this sense: this is a guy who has got it figured out. You know, and while it will take maybe some time for his his overall um, kind of, you know, ability in terms of the promo and stuff. And I think promo's there, honestly. But just, you know, the general, the actual pieces themselves to take shape fully. You just get this sense that, you know, he's he's going to get there <laughs> because he don't seem like a guy who's going to level out and, and, you know, reach his scene as just a dude on the roster. He really doesn't. He honestly feels like a guy who's going to be one of the top guys of the generation. Um, there's something just instinctively kind of special about him and honestly i i was later to see that in a lot of people i did not know um necessarily that i saw the world champion him that a lot of you guys did when he first came into AEW. i thought he was a good worker but i thought you know i didn't necessarily think he'd be the world champion the more i watch him i think he's going to be like one of the, the kind of centerpiece of the company i think he's spectacular um i agree with this I agree with this totally, actually. Eddie's promo was good, but Garcia's was definitely better, I thought. Not even because, you know, there wasn't anything wrong with Eddie's. I just wasn't, you know, it was just, it's hard to, because obviously he's cut Sony pros on Chris, right? But Garcia's was great. Yeah, I agree. I like Garcia and Utah's forever rivals. Um, yeah, the, the Ring of Honor show is going to be really good. Ring of Honor has a chance to be like a real blast, man. Like genuinely, um, like that. If they get that right, and I think they're going to, because I think there's increasing signs that our read on it was correct. That like Tony likes Ring of Honor too much to make it be shit, you know. Like it pops him too much, the brand for him to just throw it away. Um, so that's you know that's whatever. But uh, I think it's going to be good, and if so. I think you're we're going to be in for a treat in terms of it feeling different enough, but using it's like you're using great talent, but in a setting that's way that's unique enough that it has its own appeal, you know. Because I think there's going to be a lot of crossovers. I think that's that's, that's pretty clear. Um, Pop, I need to see this Keith Lee promo because many people have mentioned it. Hey Joe, do we think Thunderstorm beats Britain Jamie to start that feud next week? Um, I really hope so, Goldie. I really do. I I think it would be, um, you know, I think it would be beneficial to move on from that act. Uh, Sam Joe's got wrestling RH again, and there are three matches I'm looking forward to more than his match. Bonkers. Tags, Garcia. What other one? I'm intrigued. I'm not saying it wrong. I'm just I'm genuinely interested. That pretty it'd be fair for me on just, you know, my Joe fandom. The problem with the Joe stuff is he just he can't be on TV, which is kind of brutal. Like if you had him on TV, they could do some promos and they're both good promos. Um unfortunately he's just, you know, his schedule is such right now. But hopefully that changes. Maybe next week on the go home they get him back. But 
I think, honestly, I really hope I'm wrong on this isn't me reporting. Um, but, I oh, Serena and Mercedes. Yeah, that's fair. Serena and Mercedes are getting very good. Um, I I think there's a decent chance that rather than Joe being back, he will instead come back to work that match, drop that belt, and then, you know, f- finish whatever he's doing. I believe he's in New Orleans, I think, is where they're doing that shit. So, God bless him, man. He's, he's doing his thing. I'm very happy for him. But it's kind of a bummer from a wrestling front, you know. Um, is Briscoe's FTR the main event? It should be, yeah. Briscoe's FTR is the, you know. I think she sits out there on the social, like, you know, nowadays where the brand's everything, like everything's about, you know, this company and uh, he's doing, he's playing the clown in Twisted Metal, right? Um, that's what he's doing. I don't think he's actually doing the voice for it, which is even funnier because he's been doing voiceover stuff for a while. Um, I think he's just doing the physical portrayal. Um, that's Joe, by the way, for those of you that can't see the chat, which is almost everyone that's watching the show on delay. Well, what, what else was we, was we, I've, I've forgotten. Who cares? Oh, yeah, yeah. With the, uh, in a day where the brand is like key and all the tickets moved by the brand, like Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, Rambo, wherever the fuck, um, there is something really romantic and awesome about like Ring of Honor booked this this rematch with FTR and the Briscoes because they wanted to draw a house. That rules, right? That's like old school pro wrestling. Like for those of you that are unaware or unfamiliar or don't care, either way, um, once upon a time, that was like a big thing. One of the big wrestling playbook maneuvers was the rematch, like the big rematch. You had it in your back pocket, like, we need a house. We do the big rematch. Tony said, we need a bit. We- <laughs> We want to draw the house, brother. Let's do a big rematch. So that be said for that. It does pop me. Um, okay, there were some questions. Let me scroll. Do you have any predictions on what else we added to the RH show? Well, Takeshita is wrestling elsewhere. So that takes him off the board. I think Lee will win on the undercard, will be my guess. Not necessarily sure who against. Maybe you do Tony Nese. That would be a fun one, right? Lee Moriarty and Tony Nese. Um, I would like them to get a match on there with some of the less experienced women. Maybe you do a tag where people are kind of protected. I think that would be a nice spot for them, even if it's on the pre-show or whatever. Because it isn't lost on me that as good as it will be, you know, Mercedes and Serena are certainly not the two women who need reps, which is fine. Not, not Ring of Honor doesn't have to be developmental, but you get what I mean. Um, as for other things, I would be interested by a, a range of guest spots. Um, I would very much like to see them get a couple of familiar faces in the picture. One of the guys who I've been recently doing an agenda about in Ring of Honor is Davey, Davey Richards. I don't think that's possible with MLW, but it would pop me if it was just like him versus Moriarty. He just came and wrestled him. That would be tremendous. Um, I would also like them to book Rocky Romero, please. I'm not just booking stuff that I would like to see. Rocky Romero could wrestle him Moriarty. That would fucking roll, by the way. Um, the work horsemen should press on that show. They should be up against uh, the team. Hmm. The team of Ortiz and Homicide versus the work horsemen. Eddie Kingston on commentary. Great show I just put together there. Grisham versus Seidel or who for the baby? Seidel. I think it's Seidel. I think um, it ain't main event in any way because you have no, you have like one week left and it's Briscoe's FTR. That's what the show, let's be honest, look, the show is about Briscoe's FTR and it's about Samoa Joe Jay Leafle. I'm with a lot of you. I'm more excited for the pure title. But like from a TV perspective, in terms of like who's a big name, you know, Samoa Joe and Jay Leafle is bigger, I think. Not that that matters in the Ring of Honor realm, but I think you get what I mean, right? Um, so it's not a big match progression regardless. And you can't have him beat someone who's like, like Claudio is eventually going to get that belt, I think, but he ain't he ain't winning it next week because why would you turn Grisham heel before he loses the belt, you know? So I think it'll be side down. By the way, that match would be great. Like, I think the world of Lee, but in, at this current moment, I do think side is better. It's not a knock on Lee. I think side is one of the most underrated wrestlers on earth. He's actually unbelievably good. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm right on this, right? Rocky and Lee, tremendous match. Oh, yeah, and you'll get the Tully lads, yeah. Trios. There you go. So like, here's a nice one. Do like 
Willow, AQA, there's slow else could we get in that match? There's some of the younger because AQA is super young. Um I honestly would be really interested in, or, or like enticed to have Anna J kind of be a a ring of honor talent for a while. I kind of think it could help her, but they're clearly gonna do an angle on TV, so maybe not. Um Sky Blue, maybe you slide in there. Something of that ilk. Some you know, some of the women who would benefit from that kind of spot. Um, okay. What else do we have here? Brian Cage Moriarty could actually be the match, but that's unfortunate because I don't think Lee would win. Yeah, Shelly's dressed in Kushida, it looks like, right? Nashville. New Japan US is kind of killer, man, honestly. Like, the, the beauty of, of New Japan Strong is a TV show is you can very much pick it up and put it down accordingly. Like, you can just look at that week's lineup. It ain't angle heavy at all. It has ongoing arcs, but like not really that deep. You can really just drop it in and out. It's a really nice roster. It's not even a roster. It's just like a really nice kind of idea, concept. It just features guys from all across the, the wrestling world. It's really cool. Um, House of Black versus Silver and Reynolds on Friday. Yes, that was, that was pretty neat. John Woolworths, bro, he came back. Um, he worked Ring of Honor last year and was like, good. Popped me tremendously. Trisha Dora is a good one. Trisha Dora is great. She should honestly just be on their full time roster. Like, honestly, I'm. I think it's about Willow. I, I was kind of trying to think of folks that are like, kind of making their way more in terms of their skill level. Because I think Willow should actually just be on the TV a lot. I think she'd get over more on, um, on a national TV stage than a lot of the women that are used on. So I think the same. Like, genuinely, um, magnetic about her as a baby face. So. The way New Japan Strong works is they do they run a show. So say it's called The Late Night Grin, right? They do New Japan, Late Night Grin, and they'll cut that show into four TVs. And on fight, you can buy The Late Night Grin set for I think it's like eight bucks, and you get those four TVs. And then when those ones end, you, the next one. Or you can just subscribe to New Japan World, which is like basically the same price. But some, you know, it depends what's easy for you. But fight... Unless I'm very much mistaken, because I did this only a few months ago, so I'm pretty sure. But if you're not interested in New Japan World and just want to get strong, you pay eight bucks, you get like a month of TV. So, whether that's worth it not to you, I base it on who it is, honestly. It's some some tapings have Eddie Kingston and Buddy Matthews, done. Um, some tapings have Hikaleo, not done. Folks, Biff Busick. Even better that you booked him into one of the LA Dojo guys because you know that would be like just pure meat and potatoes, kick-ass wrestling. It'd be fucking awesome. And Biff being like a bully and roughing. Oh, God bless. Yeah, G1. I'm, by the way, I don't know if I've said this to you guys, but like, I fully intend for the Burt to be basically like a fucking full G1 program because then it'd be a while there where they, those shows end I'm on the Burt like an hour or two later and it's going to be a rule. I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, don't be wrong. There's some matches I'm probably going to you know, be on my phone a little bit more for. I'm not sure everyone needed to be in the G1, but you know, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. Biff as TV champ. Yeah, Biff is unbelievable. John Moore has taped an elevation match tonight. My God. He probably will work the fucking show then if you look good. You know that he'll pop Tony. You know? Biff versus Pack for the All Atlantic Belt. Good Lord. There's a match on NXT TV in the glory days. Dukes don't insult me like that. There's a match on uh, NXT TV. Biff and and uh, and Drew Mack. It is unbelievable. You've never seen it. It's like four minutes long, I think. Ridiculous match. It's one of the great sprints in wrestling history. Biff's, he's unbelievable. Um, anyway, I've been here for an hour. I should probably go to bed soon. Do we have... Any questions? Let's do like a and a close up here uh, so I feel better. Because I don't know if there's going to be a burr, honestly. I should probably, you know, arrange some different things better in my day tomorrow based on how this has gone. Um, or today, I should say. It's now 4 a.m. Um, any questions before we, we close out a grin prompt to Dynamite Post Show? I do want to know, these are very seldom going to be the case for Solo. Generally, these will happen when everyone's fired up or everyone's around. Tonight was so unique that I was genuinely uh, I felt compelled to come on and share it with you guys the, the kind of post-show excitement because I 
I think that's one of the best episodes I've ever done. Um, I think the main event and the moment that came from it was one of the most memorable things they've ever produced as a wrestling promotion. It was what, to me, that's what wrestling's all about. Genuine excitement, genuine surprise. Even after all these, you know, all these grifters talking about, I ain't the same because everyone knows everything. It's like, no, man, you can still do it. You can still pull it off, you know? Brilliant. All right, let's look at the chat here. There you go. I didn't make it up. Shingo and Biff. Fuck. That's outrageous, man. Um, the Burt Luck Foley. You're going to be on your feet to Jonah and Bad Luck Foley. Hey, listen, in all seriousness, I know Jonah has been like a thing on this show and like a bit. I'm really happy for that dude. He clearly has a great affinity for Japanese wrestling and he has a great um, deal of admiration for the great big men of wrestling history and how, you know, so many of them had these wonderful runs in Japan. I really hope he does well. I'm, I'm very, very happy for him. He seems like a good guy. It's the biggest opportunity of his life. And I say that as someone who's generally very quick to point out how big of a deal WWE TV is. He never made it Raw or SmackDown. He was pushing X TV, but really ultimately who cares? He's in the G1. And all bits and jokes aside, if Jonah gets it right and he delivers, he can stick there. I don't know if he will. We'll see. Hopefully he does. But if he gets it right, he can have a lifetime out there as a, as a genuinely pushed guy because he's capable and he's the mold that he's in, he's in a mold that, quite frankly, I think they want to add because bless bad luck, Farley, but time's probably come and gone for him as a, a singles guy. I don't know if I talked that turn there. So, yeah, tremendous. Um, right, what we got here? How many stars did you give Top Gun Maverick? Right, in all seriousness, I know no one gives a fuck about my movie review, but I appreciate Toby Suicide to placate me. Genuinely, not doing a bit here. If you've not seen Top Gun Maverick, Change it. Go see it. I didn't have the first film I've never seen. You don't have to have seen it. Any callbacks are shown to you in flashbacks, and you can piece it together very, very easily. It's fine. That film is tremendous. I'm not saying it's a five star movie. Give it four. But that is an old school blockbuster that uses all of the new tools of cinema and makes it look incredible. It is just good old fashioned blockbuster cinema. You know? Kind of movie that was once much more common has now kind of vanished, which is fitting because Tom Cruise is kind of the last movie star. Really is a blast. If you've not seen it and you like movies at all, I would legitimately recommend it because I normally am not a fan of those films. And it popped me huge. So there you go. Me and the other four people in the theater, we're having a great time. Does Gargano debut in Ring of Honor? Um, eventually, yeah. He'll be on the TV eventually. Um. I don't think it'll happen next week, but he'll be on the TV, I think. I think he'll be like the big surprise on the on the premiere, you know. Going to have a full G1 preview prediction show. When is it official? Like, when does it actually start? I know it's like literally this week, right? Is it with the weekend? We might be able to do that on the BERT. Yes, that'd be a good idea. Maybe the Friday show if we can. I don't know. I don't know how the time works out. I apologize, guys. I'm very bad at that stuff because I'm just day-to-day at times. Um, does FTR still get the belt soon? Yes, I'm pretty sure of that. I don't think Swerve and Keith are a long-term fit as champions. I think this is a way to make the TV more exciting, to do something people didn't expect, to give people a moment. I think they'll pretty quickly get back to their kind of, you know, previously assumed destination. That's just my personal opinion. Yano and Jonah. Pop. No comment on whether it will be good. Pretty sure it won't be, but we can pretend. Um, this is adorable. Filthy Tom's another guy that's a big opportunity for. I've never been a huge Filthy Tom guy, but his match recently with Fred Russell was, was fabulous. So, I mean, again, I mean, rooting for him, he seems like a wonderful person. I, I just, I've never been a massive fan, but I'm aware that he's probably going to take this seriously in a way that he's very seldom taken seriously the work I've seen him do in Major League Wrestling and the like. Um, so hopefully he kills it, bro, because, again, he's another guy that, like, you know, if he gets it right, he could be a, a regular. Um, I actually expected there to be some movement on the AEW front after he left MLW, but that didn't seem to come to be. Um, pop. DDT to a chainsaw away from a perfect show. It was something, right? It was something. Great, great show. Um, what else we got here? 
What is nope? Why is everyone saying nope? That's very scary. That movie looks good. Maybe you guys have seen that, the trailer. Um, this Saturday is the G1. It's a Friday we'll do a G1 show. We'll do a G1 show Friday, maybe. Um, the Sasha update wasn't much from a wrestling front, from what I can gather. But I could be wrong. I haven't really looked at my phone much, but just I saw one message about it, and it was like, it didn't seem to be particularly exciting. Oh, note back, Organo. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> can I fantasy book Hangman Omega reunion to take on Swerve? And you do whatever you want, mate. You do whatever you want. I mean, I just did a impromptu Top Gun Maverick review in the midst of this program, you know? Whatever works. Whatever works for you. By the way, Tom Cruise is 60, man. What the fuck? It was not, no. She's actually wrestling um, Sky Blue instead, Cody, so, you know. Right, is anyone on Twitch, is anyone online that we can raid and, and show some love to, or are we just going to leave and be, be miserable? In which case, I mean, I'm fine with that, I'm British, but is there anyone online that we can show some love to? Because we do have 40 people, and that's pretty good. No, maybe not generational, but it's pretty good. Um, yeah. Fight for post show, now they're fine. <laughs> Listen, man, I was on their channel, I was on the overbook channel this week. I don't know if he's raiding them too. Um, pop, Tofu Suicida, but also spoiler. Um, Mia Yim, Mia Yim, I'm sure, based on what happened tonight, is doing pretty well on Twitch, is what I would imagine. So, Stephen Larson are doing great, aren't imagine. What's what's Mia's uh, Mia. What the got official me and thank you, Bills Mafia. I was about to ask for something you'd already done. I'm sorry. Official me and 127. He's playing Grand Theft Auto. What's Stephen Larson that saying? Because they're very talented. I like those guys. Steve and Larson. They have 307. Holy shit. Well, me and him is. You know me and you, I voted for as wrestler of the week last week in WrestleFurious. There are many allegations about me being biased towards Eddie Kings. I didn't even vote for him. Vote for me, man. He's killing it. All right. She's definitely not going to see that we raided her because she's playing Grand Theft Auto. But nonetheless, guys, I hope you enjoy this. I do not know there'll be a bird. If the link doesn't show up on your on latenightgrin.com, then there just won't be. Just to be prepared for that because I've got other stuff. And I'm sorry. It is what it is, okay? But I hope you've enjoyed this. Tomorrow night, 5 p.m. Eastern, Jay Shell is back, and we're going to do a, a pretty fun special show, one-off, where we do we build our perfect promotion. We go back and forth, and we have to kind of share this property, which I think is going to be a neat time. Later in the night, I think we're going to do Fed Dead. There's a new intro for Fed Dead that is, like, otherworldly. Um, in fact, you know what? Fuck it. Is it here? Oh, no, I don't think it's here. Oh, I can't play it. Well, never mind. I'll play it tomorrow. You'll see it tomorrow. It's, it's, it's tremendous. Uh, in the meantime. Konnichiwa. That's the best, that's the best I can do in terms of video clips tonight. Um, so tomorrow we're going to do Fed Dead. We're going to do the 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 kind of, uh, you know, perfect promotion thing, which means it's going to be a blast. Friday, Retire the Rankings is back. Also a new intro, new bumper, new new logo, new whatever the hell. Um, Friday night, Late Night Green. You already know, three, four hours after uh, Rampage. That's always a fun time. Last week, I think it was one of the best shows we've ever done. I think hopefully it comes through on camera, but we're actually in a really nice place right now where we've kind of, I think we've all figured out what we need to be doing. I had a rough run there, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. It was, it, was, it was a rough stretch, right? I stayed on the horse, tried my best. But it was a rough stretch. So I apologize if you haven't liked the shows as much for the last maybe month and change. But last week, I'm, I feel like we've been on a better groove. So we're doing good. This Saturday also, let's just do all the promoting. Fuck it. Saturday, LNG main event, the premiere drops. The audio is already up on latenightgrin.com, uh, but you can watch it with us. We're, gonna, we're watching some old wrestling every Saturday at 6.05. Just one match. Very easy show. Watch Digest, which shoots Baby. He's got like 20 matches in the playlist. Um, it's really fun time. You know, I think it's a, if you guys use the Grin Alongs as fun as they are, and we're going to keep doing them. We really watch the match and talk about the topic at hand. I think it's a, a good time. So um, enjoy that. On Saturday, one last thing, because if you watch this, you're deep enough in that you deserve me to pull back the curtain and break Fabe. Everyone showed love to Bobby, who is 
wrapped up season one of the 31. And uh, next week is the finale. It's already, you know, good to go. Um, I am so proud of my friend Bob, who you guys maybe don't appreciate because I didn't appreciate until I did it how fucking hard it is for him to do monologues to imaginary people. And I'm so proud to see how confident he has become and how much fun he's had with it. And I just hope uh, you guys have enjoyed watching it because it's hilarious how much effort went into it because you're in there five minute episodes. And I know it's not for everyone, it's silly, but uh, we're very happy for Bobby and, and we love him very much. So show love to that show. Um, he will not be around for next week and change. So, you know, just binge the 31 over and over again like, like I do. But he's the absolute best, man. I'm so happy to see him pop himself for that project. So... Love you guys. Uh, you will be going to the Mia Yim uh, channel now. Actually, in 10 seconds. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you're about to get an outro. I don't know which. I may play both to pop myself. Yes, the Oracle cam is very funny. Oracle was also great. The historical Oracle was last night. Go watch that if you haven't already. But everyone on Twitch, uh, we love you. Enjoy it. Mia Yim. All hell. There we go. All right. I'm watching on YouTube. I hope you've liked this. You can sign up, latenightgrin.com, for just one dollar. You sort of everything over there. There are no tears, just grins. But in the meantime, enjoy this outro. All help.